Yo guys, this is Jared, aka The Saint of Sins on Xbox Live, finally, FINALLY bringing you this Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2 gameplay footage and rant that I've been promising for quite a bit of time now. So you might be asking yourself, what brought you back to this 3 year old title? Well, it has to do with the fact that for the past 3 years I've been a member of this website and online community known as TrueAchievement.com. A website dedicated to bringing together achievement whores from around the world in order to help each other obtain some of the more difficult achievements through multiple guides and walkthroughs, a forum for the online community to actually gather and communicate pretty much instantaneously, and constant streams of boosting sessions for every game imaginable. But what keeps me coming back to this website is the level of stats involved. Me being a baseball nut, I love numbers. And I love stat lines, because numbers tell interesting stories. And some of the interesting stories that this site tells is the level of difficulty some achievements have attached to them that doesn't seem very apparent upon its surface. What the site does is track gamers and their accumulated achievements as well as games completed. This then creates a ratio. The ratio gets added onto the base of the achievement score, creating these interesting numbers that tell how difficult or time consuming an achievement is. And that's what gets me. I love the challenge. I love trying to achieve something that others seem to have given up on because it's too difficult. And that, boys and girls, is what brings me back to Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2. The level of difficulty some of the achievements have attached to them that others seem to have given up on. Well, then of course I had fun with it three years ago when I played it with my friends. So I figured, why not take a trip back down memory lane and see just how well this game holds up after some time. And the answer is not very well. Oh, sure, it started off innocently enough, just like most date rapes start off innocently. But unfortunately, as time wore on with me playing this game solo, I started to notice some things that just didn't add up. One of the things I noticed as a bit odd while playing on the more advanced difficulty settings was how reliant upon certain characters and their power abilities it was in order to keep your team alive because the game did not reward you with enough health points to continue a level of such great difficulty. The character of course I'm referencing to is Iron Fist who has the ability to heal all of his teammates as well as himself through his power ability. Now unfortunately because of the story this is Marvel Civil War brought to us on the console and he is a main character for the Anti-Registration Act. This means that unfortunately choosing to go pro registration for the entire second act you have lost the ability to choose one of the most helpful and possibly most vital characters on the entire roster. Which is a bit unfortunate when you take into consideration that Act 2 hosts many, many difficult boss battles against other superheroes and supervillains. This can be very, very infuriating. Of course, there are certain workarounds to this in that you can choose certain equipment boosts to add to your team to help them gain hit points over the course of combat. Unfortunately, this still limits them to a certain percentage of health being picked up upon every single hit. Doesn't really add up to a whole lot when you get into the thick of things and are really down on health. Furthermore, sometimes trying to navigate to the right boost that helps gain health over the course of combat is a bit like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Sure, technically you can find that needle in that haystack over a course of time, but unfortunately, sometimes you just want to get back into what's really important, which is playing the fucking game. And sometimes you're just going to be fumbling in the dark trying to figure out what a boost does because it has such a cryptic description that you actually need to go out and Google it to, in order to understand what it is actually affecting in your attributes. Of course, there are other workarounds to this as well, such as team bonuses where certain characters combine together to create these teams that have special abilities placed upon them. But of course, just like everything else in this game, that too also has its drawbacks. For there are only three teams that have the special bonus ability to gain health during combat, and two of these three teams require the downloadable content. Well, go figure! But at least there's an upside. For if you beat the game on the second highest difficulty, you can then play again on the highest difficulty with all of the characters completely selectable, regardless of the storyline, and regardless of whether or not that player is already on the map as an NPC. 
But of course, that also has the drawback that it requires you to beat the game on the second highest difficulty in order to get this special perk. Yeah. Is anyone else noticing this migraine inducing issue that this game has with its little song and dance? That it's one step forward, three steps back. But yeah, I digress. After all, there are other issues to this game that really hinder its playability. And that would be its artificial increase in difficulty the further into the game you get. Now I don't mean to say that a game shouldn't become harder the further into it you progress. No, quite the opposite. But there has to be some sort of curve to it. You can't just automatically get into a part where it becomes so heinously difficult that you literally have no option in how to progress without dying and starting over. And this seems to go hand in hand with my previous issue, which is that the game design seems to be reliant, if not hinged upon, Iron Fist and his ability to keep his team alive. But I would be completely remiss if I didn't mention that this opens up another can of worms that hosts all sorts of other issues that I have with this game. And one of the issues being how completely ineffectual and almost completely useless the AI team controlled players tend to be. About as bright as Plexico Burr is trying to conceal his weapon. Add to this and the enemy AI has an unhealthy fetish with your anus. As in, it's always trying to fuck you. What this means is, you're going to notice that you are the primary, if not the sole target of the enemy AI. These issues combined means that more than likely, if you do have Iron Fist on your team, you're going to have to be in control of him in order to keep the team alive. And you're going to have to dodge a lot to keep Iron Fist alive. This is due to the fact that your AI teammates do not use their power abilities properly. In that leaving a AI controlled Iron Fist means you're rarely going to see him heal the group. So congratulations, that means you're playing the white mage of the group. And everybody fucks with the white mage. But you might be asking yourself, what's this on the screen? This doesn't look like story gameplay. Actually, you'd be right. This is simulation gameplay. And this is far, far more infuriating because it features so many different game types that don't really emulate what you can actually do in story mode. So instead of building upon what you've learned through story progression, you end up doing random bullshit missions that have nothing to do with what the game is about. Sounds like fun! And this is one of those examples of something that has nothing to do with story progression. This game type is called Breakout, and the objective is clear. Get to the prisoners and escort them to an exit safely. Some things to take note here if you haven't already noticed while watching the video. Your AI controlled teammates can be spotted and the mission still continues. The prisoner can be spotted and the mission still continues. Extra time is awarded when you escort a prisoner successfully to an exit. But of course this game type has many, many, many infuriating issues that just drive you up the wall as you try ever so hard in vain, mind you, to get gold. One of the main issues I have with this game type is how easily and how quickly the prisoner AI will get stuck on a wall or just completely stop moving forward because apparently you've gone too far ahead without him. I really, really fail to understand why the prisoner's AI seems to emulate that of a petulant fucking child. I say, fuck the ignorant and useless asshole, let him find the exit his damn self because it's not like the robots seem to give a shit whether or not they're in or out of their fucking cell. So fuck this Nick Hogan thinking motherfucker and leave this bastard hanging high and dry because this here designated driver is not interested in his backseat driving. Alright, alright, I've calmed down just a little bit. Let's get back to what this video was actually about. Which was me bitching. So if at the start of this video you missed the key number we have to reach in order to obtain gold for this mission, the magic number is 80,000. 
And no, I'm not entirely sure how much points you get for actually bringing a prisoner to an exit because it seems to fluctuate depending on how much time is left on the counter. So instead of focusing squarely on our Elmer's glue sniffing prisoner friends, we have to build up enough time on the counter in order to really get into the meat of where we're going to start building up the bulk of our points, which is through combat. This means that we have to actually save enough prisoners to get enough time extended to our counter in order to start the actual process of building up towards the goal number. But like everything else in this game, it doesn't get any easier because with every prisoner you end up saving, the map difficulty increases with extra guards on patrol as well as mines laid out on corridors. But even then it gets trickier because new guards being spawned in take up new routes and these new routes become a little harder to predict. So ultimately, by the time we actually build up enough time on our counter and have enough points as a set base, we then have to rely a bit on luck in order to get our combat in. And then from there we have to rely on even more luck, because we cannot be spotted, so have to rely upon ranged attacks, and unfortunately, ranged attacks are hard to aim. So our goal is set up that we require at least 5 minutes on our counter. So I obtain it. Next, to improve our odds of gaining more points per hit, we have to try and get a clutter of guards gathered up in one corner. Seems simple enough when you consider that some of them have these really odd paths that allow them to actually cross into one another. But having multiple attempts before where I had gained 5 minutes almost exactly to the point on the counter, I still felt uneasy about how much time would remain for me to actually obtain 80,000. So I went off and did something really, really stupid. And he died! Words just fucking fail me. I have no... I, I'm done. I, I, I fucking quit. We're done. No, fuck this shit. Fuck, fuck it all. Oh, you were finished. Well, allow me to retort.